Those of you who subscribe for my wild swimming content are probably wondering what's going on. It's virtually the end of summer already and I've not made any wild swimming videos this year yet. Don't worry, I've not forgotten about you. It's only a very small number of you, but you're all important to me nonetheless. But the reality is that I've actually done most of the obvious wild swimming spots around Chamonix already, and indeed many of the non obvious ones as well. So it's only a pretty small list of places I've still got yet to visit this being one of them today but with it being a really cold wet spring this year many of the high mountain lakes remain snow covered well into July so there was nothing for me to come and film if I come up here in June or July it might just have been covered in the snow and also we've not had any proper heat waves this summer so compared to the last couple of years it has been pleasantly cool yeah, the last three or four weeks have still been hot. It's been August, but nothing crazy. So I've not actually felt the need to be heading into the high mountains in search of cold water it's very often. But as I say, we do have one major lake left, indeed groupings of lakes left, and that's Ladakh Noir, which is where I'm heading today. So this is the highest and most remote of the major mountain lakes in the Igi Rouge. It's actually two big lakes and a few smaller ones. And it's up above 2,500 meters, so it's actually higher than La Bleu as well. And as such, it's notorious for holding snow pretty much throughout the summer. So if any year it's still going to be holding snow, it's certainly this year. So I one truly expect to still find a few floating icebergs around the edge. You can approach this, these lakes from either the Brevon or the Fougere sectors. Indeed, it makes a very logical link up to come up one way and down the other. But definitely the Easiest and best approach is from Plan Prayer and Brevon. Basically follows the same approach as for that Cornu down there. So head up towards Col Cornu, then from the Col, instead of heading down towards the Lac, you continue along the ridge. Now, it is a little bit confusing because the, there's yellow tags on both paths, but just make sure you don't start descending. If you're descending too far, then you've gone the wrong way. You need to stay high basically and contour around from Col Cornu to Col de la Glier, which is just down there. Again, if you're coming up from the Fougere sector, then you come up through the Col de Glier, and then onwards along the bridge here. If walking, it's definitely going to take you over an hour to get here. It's quite a bit further than that Cornu, but it makes a pretty good trail run, which is what I've done today. So you can definitely get here a lot quicker than that if you want to, if you're willing to sweat for it. And then, of course, if you have worked hard to get here, you can enjoy jumping in the water so much more which is what I'm really looking forward to right now. So, like I say, it's a group of lakes here, but there's two main ones. The Lat Noir NO and Lat Noir Demba, which is actually a few groupings of lakes in itself, just a little bit further down there. There's also a third reasonably big lake, the Petit Lac, even further down the hill. That's actually below that corner. It's much closer to that corner than it is here but it's part of this grouping because the water which flows through these flows into that as well. So yeah, lots of places to play up here. So right now, both lakes are actually just about snow free. This is just the last remaining snow patch which is just, just still clinging on to the edge of the water here. But other than that, actually all the snow and ice is gone. For now, I'm going to head down to the, the lower lac first, jump in there and then head back here, up here afterwards.
given the name, the water's actually much clearer and bluer than I was expecting. It's still definitely a bit darker than Lac Cornu, but it's probably clearer than Lac de Brevant, for example. But another thing, I was not expecting this pretty amazing view of Mont Blanc, given that we're on the shady side of the Guy Rouge. But I guess, seeing as we're nearly at 2,500 meters here, we're actually above the top of all the crags between here and Mont Blanc, obviously. So yeah, what a stunning view. That is lovely, exactly what I needed. The water's pretty cold. Not gonna be sitting in here for hours, that's for sure, but yeah. Definitely refreshing, but pleasant enough. I can most people get in and out of this without being in too much pain. Not gonna stay in very long, but yeah. Lovely. The disadvantage of running here is traveling fast and light. I haven't got my sandals, which makes scrambling around, exploring much more painful when you're barefoot. But these views just keep getting better and better and better. So I climb back up to the upper lake. There's no easy way between the two, basically. It's very scrambly, very rough and loose. But in terms of elevation, they're only about 50 meters apart vertically. And yeah, a couple hundred meters horizontally, so it's not far. So it's easy to go for a swim in them both. Just dip my toes in the edge here. It definitely feels slightly colder up here. The elevation change isn't gonna make any noticeable difference, 50 meters, but I guess this one holds snow and ice for longer throughout the season, so it stays colder for longer. But anyway, might just be imagining it. I should have to dive in and see. Definitely a couple of degrees colder up here at least in the lower lake. So if you are jumping straight in, you need to be careful you don't give yourself cold water shock because this water is proper cold. And coming from me, that's saying something. But to us, that goes for all mountain lakes and rivers, really. Always test the water first. Dip a toe in, dip your hand in to show you at least psychologically prepared for what's coming. So I come up here late afternoon, which means I'm gonna have a long run back down to town now, having missed all the last lifts, but that was deliberate because Late afternoon is the best time to be up at these lakes. That's when the sun's come back round to the side. And also, so much quieter as well, because especially in August, even all the way up here, there's going to be a, probably a few dozen people here throughout the day, whereas I've got it all to myself now, so it's absolutely beautiful. But yeah, in the afternoon, the lights are at its best, the views are at their best, and the water is as warm as it's going to get. So yeah, this is the, this is the right time to come if you're coming up here. Just be prepared for the long walk or run back down to town.